Let's go on our do's and do that. So of course I want to get all this done just because there was a lack of stuff happening for USC. Uh, it was a couple days ago on Wednesday, which I was hoping there would be more information, but there wasn't. But also since this weekend is a pretty big weekend for my teams, you know, Duke plays North Carolina, the biggest rival Lakers have a game most likely as well. The Ducks have a few games also. So yes, yeah, want to get this in before. So both Michael Pittman Jr. and Austin Jackson, the two guys coming out of USC who are looking to look at like the most likely two guys to get drafted in the NFL from USC. They were invited to the NFL Combine, which is cool because it's obvious that you're most likely going to get drafted once you get there and it's a better place so you, for you to show your stuff and be in front of all the scouts and all the teams as well. So I'm happy for those guys that they're able to get that. Then also USC finally found their special teams coordinator in Sean Snyder. He's from Kansas State. So they say he's pretty good so they were able to get him. They must have had to pay a little bit, but luckily they at, at least have that coach now so they don't have to worry about it as much. Then speaking of Duke, they went on the road as I mentioned in the other video, but they did beat Boston College. It was a lot closer than I anticipated. I think it was a 63 to 55 win. It was also Coach K's 500th win, I believe in the ACC, because I know he has like over a thousand wins in total for his whole entire career. He got that a few years back. So yeah, it must be ACC wins, but congrats to him. It's great that they're able to get the W, hopefully. Like I said, they got a big time matchup against North Carolina. Hopefully they can get that as well. I'm really hoping for it because uh, North Carolina sucks a lot this year and it would be pretty bad for Duke to lose to them, especially because it's a rival as well. Then the Anaheim Ducks, they had a game against the Ottawa Senators who are one of the worst teams right now in the NHL and somehow it still took to a shootout to beat them. But luckily the Ducks did three to two. So happy they got the W against a crappy team, but it should have been a lot easier than that, guys. And then uh, a, a four-star linebacker from Alamany High School, which is actually a high school where one of my sisters went to, which is pretty cool. He actually committed to USC the other day, and it's gonna be a tough name to say. It's I think it's Niwafe Tui Halamaka. I hope I'm saying that right, buddy. But congrats to getting to USC. He is a 2022 guy, so. I believe he's going into his freshman year, or no, sorry, not his freshman, his junior year. So he has a junior, senior, and then he'll finally be at USC if he still decides to go to there in a couple years. So hopefully he can, because maybe he'll be a five-star by then. Then USC also got another player for this year's class, a running back in Matt Palumbo. They've been getting a lot of guys from St. John Bosco. This is their second preferred walk-on guy. So of course he doesn't get a scholarship right away, but he is able to still be on the team as long as he pays his way like every other normal uh, student there. So congrats to him and we definitely need a lot of depth at running back since we lost out on a lot of guys on Wednesday. Then another ex-USC defensive end, Wes Horton. He announced his retirement over Instagram the other day. Uh, I, I remember him va vaguely. He was pretty, he was okay for USC and then he lasted in the NFL at least this long, like nearly 10 years. So congrats to him and hopefully maybe he could be a coach one day. Then James Campin, he's an offensive line coach who recently signed with the Chargers. So they get a new offensive line coach. Hopefully he's a lot better than the last guy was and can develop these guys or make them choose the correct guys and what they have been lately. Then the Lakers did beat the Spurs 129 to 102 pretty close game throughout as well but then luckily LeBron got hot from three like towards the end I think he had like six six threes in that spurt it was really awesome to see it was pretty crazy like how it happened and they ended up blowing them out which is pretty cool they did <coughs> lose I think it was like a couple games no like the next game it was against Houston who made a couple of trades but you kind of assumed Lakers would be able to beat them since the Lakers made no trades and would be able to have more players in them but they just came up short and lost that game as well but luckily they were able to get the game before and keep uh, that number one spot in the west that's very coveted right now because whoever's number one is definitely going to be a lot better heading into the playoffs so hopefully they can keep that going then 
an ex Chargers safety who they drafted a long, long time ago, Eric Weddle out of Utah. He was great for the Chargers for a very long time. Had about, I think he stayed for two contracts and then after that they decided to move on and they weren't the same until they got Derwin James and Adrian Phillips, guys like that. It took a couple years after he left, but I believe he went to Baltimore and the Rams as well. I think he <clears throat> he went to the Super Bowl that year, but yeah, it was a great historic career, especially while he was with the Chargers. Glad he was there. Uh, he didn't do much after he left, but at least he still got a chance to go to the Super Bowl to at least get a chance to win because he obviously not going to do it with the Chargers in my opinion. But the rest of him on a great career and hopefully we'll see what he can do in the near future. Then also a lot of guys were traded, but nobody like <clears throat> big time USC, but and the Lakers didn't make any trades as well. But uh, a couple big time Duke guys got traded. Uh, Justice Winslow, he was <clears throat> excuse me a top pick for the Miami Heat a while ago, and I think he signed a new contract last year as well, but they ended up trading him to Memphis for a couple guys that Miami really wanted. But he also joins a couple of another ex-Duke guys and Tyus Jones and Grayson Allen over there, which is awesome. So hopefully he can flourish out there, being around a couple guys that he actually won a national championship with in 2015. And then also Jabari Parker, who for some reason is, is on his 15 in like three years, which is pretty crazy, but he got sent from the Hawks to Sacramento, <clears throat> and it's kind of good too for him because uh, they have like two to three other Duke players uh, in that system as well, so he gets sent to where a bunch of Duke guys are, which is really cool for him. Definitely looking forward to how these guys look on their new teams, but also being able to play again with their ex Duke players is gonna be awesome. The, the brotherhood as they say but thanks for watching people like and subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think yeah just had to get this done real quick very short video happy about that and have a great rest of your day